Today I'm going to be reviewing the watt cycle 12 volt 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This is the mini model which is smaller and more compact than most batteries of the same size. It has Bluetooth app for monitoring the battery and also comes with a BMS that can provide 200 amp continuous discharge. To show you how small and compact this battery is, I have a typical 12 volt 100 amp hour battery here. It's about the same size of a typical car battery, right? But it's only 100 amp hour. This is almost three times the capacity. And look at the size. It's almost the same size as the 100 amp hour battery. That's how small and compact this battery is. You can only feel the difference when you try to lift up the battery. For this one, I can lift up easily, but this one, I can barely lift it up. The physical dimensions of the battery, 7.5 inches by 13.5 inches by 10 inches. And it weighs a whopping 60 pounds or 27.5 kilogram. It comes with a very nice handle with a rope here and you can grab it by both hands which is totally necessary because this battery is heavy. You can also grab it by this handle right here and there is an indentation that you can put your finger in here and it has a good grip so you can grab it from here. The battery can be controlled by Bluetooth so let me go ahead and show you the Bluetooth app. And this is the front screen of the app. It shows the state of charge of the battery. The battery right now is at 13.37 volts on my meter. On the app, it shows 13.3 volts, which is accurate enough, but there's only one decimal place though. It also shows the current and the wattage when the battery is charging or discharging. I have a 12 volt light bulb here and I'm gonna plug it in. Here you can see on the screen, the battery is 13.3 volts and we are negative 4.7 amps. So we are discharging and the power that is discharging is at 62.6 watts. There are two buttons here that you can control charging and discharging function. You can turn on and off charging and discharging. And in this case, it's discharging. So I'm going to try and turn it off. The light turns off. Let me zoom out and show you again. So right now my light bulb is off. I'm going to turn it back on. There we go. Now it's back on and my light bulb is turned on. So you can remotely turn on and off the battery discharging function. You can also turn on and off the charging function. But my battery is 100% so I cannot show you uh, the charging function because it, it, it can't take any more charge. And now I click this button again, it will turn off my light bulb. So you can remotely turn off your discharging function, which is very convenient. On the left side of the screen, we have a temperature gauge, which shows the internal temperature of the battery in Fahrenheit and in Celsius. On the top here, we have the name for the battery. And you can actually change the name of your battery to anything that you want. So let me see if I can just put in anything here. There we go. And this feature is very important when you have multiple of the same batteries. Let's go to the next page. And on the very top we have setting, which allows you to change a few parameters. You can change the max charge voltage right now is 14.6 and you can put any number here from 0 to 15.6 i'm not sure how useful this feature is because you don't want to overcharge your battery so you don't want to put 15.6 volts in here but sometimes you may want to undercharge your battery so you can put a voltage lower than 14.6 volts in here in a case where you don't want to charge the battery up to 100%. You can also change maximum charge current. So the default value is 210 amps. 
You can change this value also from 0 to 600 amps. You can change maximum charge temperature, minimum charge temperature, minimum discharge voltage, and maximum discharge temperature, minimum discharge temperature. And that is all for the setting. And let's go back here. And down here is just general information. What cycle like website, user manual, phone number, email. And that is everything about this app. I think the most useful feature of this app is the ability to remotely turn on and off charging and discharging function. I have charged the battery to 100%. It's now at 13.36 volts. Each of these capacity testers can only do 10 amp max. So I got two of these running in parallel. Total discharge rate is 20 amps. That is 10 amp on the left and another 10 amp on the right. 20 amp discharge total. So it's going to take about 14 hours to finish. It has been about 10 and a half hours and the capacity on each meter is 106 amp hour. So total capacity is about 212 amp hour on both meters. We're getting close. It has been exactly 14 hours and the capacity is over 140 amp hour on the left. 141.78 amp hour on the right so the total capacity is a little bit over 282 amp hours for both of these together so that's a little bit more than the rated capacity already but we are still running you can see it's at 12.1 volt 12 volt right now so it can go for a little bit more so the end result will be quite a bit more than 280 amp hour. I'll be right back when it's done. All right, finally, the battery BMS just shut down. You see the voltage right now, 0 0.025 volts on the battery. And the test is done. Let's see what we've got here. On the left, we've got 14 hour, 45 minutes total time. Total capacity 148.32 amp hour. See what we got on the right 149.11 amp hour. So the total capacity is 297.43 amp hour for both capacity tester. And that's almost 300 amp hour. That's quite a bit more than the rated 280 amp hour capacity on the battery. That is awesome. Here's the data I have collected and there is a correction that I need to make. This battery is not 140 amp hour. It is 280 amp hour. So 280. I didn't realize it's mistake until now. So it's 280 amp hour capacity, not 140. And here is our beautiful discharge curve. It stays relatively flat all the way near the end. And look at that. We got almost 300 amp hour capacity out of this battery. So that is an awesome battery. This battery has low temperature charging protection. So let's go ahead and test that. I put the battery in the freezer overnight and I just Got it out of the freezer. Check on the temperature now. Zero, zero degrees Celsius. Got my charger ready, so let's go ahead and plug it in. And it does not charge the battery. You can see the battery voltage, 14.78. That comes from the charger, not from the battery. So if I unplug the battery and the uh, the current is a zero. 12.9. So there you go. The low temperature charging protection actually works. It's time for a load test. I've got the battery hooked up to my inverters. 
this is 2000 watts each so I have two 2000 watts inverter totaling 4000 watts this battery is 280 amp hour mini model but in the user manual there's only 300 amp hour mini model but I think the specs should also be the same or very close so the maximum continuous discharge current is going to be about 200 amp so I'm going to try and push it to the limit but first I want to see how it runs below the limit I've got my heater here and it's about 1500 watts so it will be about I would say 130 amps on the 12 volt out of the battery now let's turn it on 30 amps 40 50 It's been running for over 6 minutes now and it's stable at 119 amps. Battery voltage is stable at 12.74 volts. Everything is nice and cool so that is pretty good. Alright, I'm gonna stop now. So here's the second test. I'm gonna push it to the limit. I've got the heater plugged in the bottom inverter. Electric kettle plugged in the top inverter. Now let's try and push it over 200 amps. Eighty amps. Let's turn this on. Two hundred and thirty-three amps. Turn on the timer. See how long. Oh, not long at all. Let me turn this off. I think it was about so six point nine seconds, but I was a few seconds late, so I would say about ten seconds when it goes over 200 amps and the BMS shuts down you see the voltage of the BMS now is only 1 volt let's see how long it takes to turn back on so let's reset start oh yeah there we go what was that 11 seconds and I was also about a few seconds late, so I would say about 20 seconds or so for the BMS to turn back on. You see the battery voltage now is 13.2 volts. So there you have it. The battery runs just fine for anything below 200 amps. When you go over 200 amps, you got about 10 seconds before the BMS shuts down. And then after the BMS shuts down, you have about 20 seconds for the BMS to turn back on. So there you go. It does exactly what it says in the user manual. So there you go. I have done all the tests needed for this battery. Capacity test, especially capacity test. We've got almost 300 amp hour on the rated 280 amp hour capacity battery. That's awesome. I've got low test, overload protection test, low temperature charging protection test. It passed every test with flying colors. And that's all I have for now, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.